All right, guys, we are on our west buffer, and um, I was gonna talk to you about some of the other weeds we have on campus. So one that's particularly annoying is the bindweed. And we're not under any impression that we could ever really get rid of this plant, but what we're trying to do is keep it from going to seed because the seeds can last in the ground for like 20 years. And the tap roots go super deep, up to like 13 feet. And so what we're really just trying to do is get all the top vegetation off and prevent it from putting more seeds into the soil. So this is what it looks like. You can always tell it's bindweed because it has this arrow shape, arrowhead shaped leaf, and then it's climbing. So if you wanna follow my finger here, you can see that it's climbing up all of this other vegetation. And it becomes very annoying because it'll go up trees and prevent plants we actually do want to be here from getting sunlight and nutrients. So bindweed bad. So this is how we're going to remove it. So you start in an area and you kind of consolidate it and figure out where it's actually coming from. So here I've got like a nice handful and then I'm just going to start to dig it out with my hoary and then I can feel, I can kind of feel it giving and so there's the root and then as I'm pulling there's more, it's all attached. Kind of do that. And if you feel the root come out, you'll feel it and then you follow it essentially. And then in that area I was just working in, I'll typically kind of revisit it because you'll find little pieces of the root. And the most frustrating thing about bindweed is that it will grow from a single leaf or if you leave a piece of root in the soil, it'll continue to grow. So we wanna be as thorough as possible without wasting a ton of time. So it's a nice balancing act that we're trying to do. Just by removing the top layer, we've already done a lot. Bindweed has white flowers, um, and hopefully we're getting it before it goes to flower, but um, that's another way to identify it. So um, yeah, that's bindweed. And then the next weed on our list is blackberry. Um, this is a good example to remember to pick up your tools and put them in a place you can find them because they're easily camouflaged in the mulch. Um, and now that I'm not using it, I'm going to put it in that spot and grab a different tool. So, blackberry. I'm sure you guys can identify it because it's uh, all over the Pacific Northwest. But if you can't, you can always tell because of its red thorns. Um, and it usually has these little leaf, leaflets that make five leaves. And uh, it grows in these brambles and cre can create thickets, which make it really hard for animals to pass through um, different areas. And it also is a fast grower and it outcompetes native plants. And so there's a lot of reasons why you want to get rid of it. Um, even though it has delicious berries. Um, that's another way to tell that it's blackberry, it's that it will have little white to pinkish flowers with berries on it. So um, now I'm gonna try and remove this one. All right, I got my pruners here, I'm using them safely. I did not put them in my pocket. And I'm gonna find the crown of the blackberry and start to just kind of take off any of the um, plant that could scratch me while I'm trying to get rid of it. Not worth it, very frustrating. I'm gonna put my pruners back in a safe spot so I don't lose them. Relocate the crown of the plant and then I'm going to start digging around it. And this is a pretty small plant. It's not a fully developed one, but it still has this gnarly root crown. That's always what we're trying to get rid of. Here's an example. If we don't get rid of the crown, the plant will just come back in weeks. So we just want to make sure that we're trying to get as much of the crown as possible. All right, for our last invasive plant, we're going to talk about reed canary grass, which is all over our farm. It loves water and it thrives in this area and it's a really difficult one to get rid of. Um, as I'm looking for some, I want to point out one other plant this right here is stinging nettle. I'm gonna zoom in. While we don't need to get rid of it, um, just be careful of it because it hurts. So if you see it and you need to get around it, you can cut it back just to avoid hurting yourself. Um, 
So please avoid this plant. It has jaggedy leaves. You can see the flowers droop and then a purplish stem. All right, reed canary right here. So you can tell reed canary grass because it is about two and a half to three feet tall. It'll get um, plumes where its seeds are. There's an example of it right over there. I don't know if you want to zoom into that. Um, and it grows in mats. So um, usually if you see one reed canary uh, grass piece, you'll see like a whole mat of it. So we have no chance of actually getting rid of it with the shovel, but what we're trying to do again is at the very least keep it from going to seed. And if we can get some of the root out, it'll prevent it from growing back as fast. So it's gonna be the same thing as a blackberry where we're essentially just digging it a circle around it. What I like to do is shake off the excess soil because soil is a topsoil is a finite resource and we always want to preserve as much of it as we can. So these are the roots that we're trying to get out. These like crispy brown guys. These little uh, pink guys, those are the new grass pieces that are coming up that we also want to remove. So yeah, those are the main four plants you're going to see all over campus and we really appreciate all your work in trying to help us control them and make it easier for our farmers to farm. So thank you.